Let's rock and roll, boys. Okay. Uh, why is it giving me like a beat, metronome beat? <laughs> the metronome is uh, to the to the right of the tempo and things on top top of the screen. The right there's a, or, <laughs> or maybe just go with it. Maybe the syncopation will be really good for your vocals. For your vocal. All right, got it. Turn it off. Turn it off. Thank no, you. Turn it back on. All right. Okay. <laughs> You're ready for the clap, I see. Or prayer, which is also how we start the podcast. So, um, <laughs> thank you. Uh, thank you, Senpai. Taysen san. Okay, then you, you're you're my sama, so I guess that would make me. <laughs> is that like the good. senpai? Which was which is that? I, think... I thought sama is like in, was a. Uh, I don't know. Uh, honorific. <laughs> sure. <laughs> okay, well, on three. Okay. One. There's way one, two, three. I was ready to say welcome to a special edition of another Nintendo podcast brought to you by. Anchor. Check out Spotify's new podcast platform. <laughs> And Casper Mattress. Uh, hi, I'm Austin Cummings, and I'm joined by... Tayson Bowie. And this is a very strange experience for me right now. And I, 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 I want you to host this whole thing. I want you just to just take it away. You, you have know, the mic, baby. Um, Tayson, yes. tell, you have been very, very generous with your time in that you have listened to another Nintendo podcast on multiple occasions, Indeed. allegedly. Indeed, I have. Which I very much appreciate. And... Um, so I guess I have to ask you why. Why do I but, listen? I, I think it has to do with the question I was trying to lead us to earlier and that you so <laughs> poorly sidestepped. Mm -hmm. um, and we'll um, never find out what it is. So we thought it'd be fun, uh, which is to say I thought it'd be fun. You were very generous again and agreed. So we have both started playing a Nintendo adjacent Ar property. Arguably adjacent. Right, which is that, well, I feel like it's, okay, so. The property uh, is Nintendo adjacent, yes, but. This particular yes, sure. piece in the franchise of it I mean, is it's, not. It's adjacent, adjacent. So yeah, pers we have we're playing both of us Persona Five Royal of the Shin Megami Tensei series, and uh, it, now is that game uh, you know officially technically on a Nintendo platform? Uh, no, not not on there. But Persona Five um, Strikers that's on there. Uh, Joker himself. That little rascal, he is in uh, Super Smash Brothers Ultimate. So really? He has enough presence. Yes, he's there. I had no idea. Because again, he's hot as hell. I do not. I do not have. Okay, and he has. Okay, the name of his persona is what now? You know, I, the one that you get initially, and it looks so cool, but it's it's trash. It's oh my god, trash! I keep. I no, I don't. I, put it in I, post. I am awesome. I've killed him so fast. It was one of the first things yeah, I was like, sure. I'm gonna execute you. And this guillotine is, it. I love yes. that too. So quaint when you just drop that guillotine on him. What is um, the name of it? I am is it Arsene? Google it. I am oh, I think I said it. Is it Arsene? Yep. Yeah, very nice. Based on the, uh, um, Lupin? Mm hmm. The Gentleman Thief. The no, Gentleman, Gentleman Thief. thief. Right. Uh, All right. Okay, well, in any event, let's talk about this game. So, <laughs> the game both of us have played is Persona 5 Royal, which is a kind of infamously long game. I, I, and so we thought, how fun would it be to do a little book club and talk about it in this, in this way? At regular, semi-regular intervals. So right now the date is April 15th, uh, 2021. And so we're checking in. Jason, you have passed me a bit in the game. I, so where I have, are you at in Persona 5? I have just finished the third palace, which is basically these dungeons that they crawl into when they're going around their mm -hmm. merry journey. Uh, I just defeated, yep. so I beat the third palace and I actually took their um, final exams for that semester quarter. So. Yeah, it, uh, but um, the reason is because I'm just staying up super late until midnight and ignoring my teacher responsibilities of lesson planning. And I'm just like, this game about high school is way more interesting than real high school. So <laughs> let's play this. Very good. Those children need you too. And if anything, they're in more crisis than probably your IRL uh, high school students. So oh, I thought you were talking another way around. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, I hope your real students are fine. And these students have a lot going on. They got a lot of they got a lot of drama. They have a uh, lot of drama. Persona 5 Royal, we're coming to it a little bit late. It came out October 13th, 2019 in Japan, mm -hmm. and then uh, in spring of 2020 for us here. It's an expanded version of Persona 5. Correct. And uh, 
I am not as far as you, Tayson. I am only approaching the end of the second palace. I have to now drop the calling card. That's where I'm at. So I'm okay. getting close. I'm getting close. Well, here, yet. well, here's the thing. I think that was really interesting. Um, you mentioned it. You know, came out a year, two years, a year or two ago. Mm -hmm. um, but it's the, it's like the extension of Persona Five, and that was I had no idea, but that was on PS3 as well. I know, which is which is like ridiculous. How... Which is part of the, which is how some of us Nintendo fans get pissed about the fact that it is not on the Switch. Because if that thing were on PS3, we would hope it would be on the Switch. We must assume there is some agreement between Sony and um, Atlas, uh, owned by Sega, that it's like an exclusive on PlayStation platforms, and that's why it's not there. Because it does seem a, a total crime to not have this game portably. Yes. But it's, it's just great on on PlayStation Four. When you say portably, do you mean like on a Nintendo, like on a portable device, or do you mean yeah, like porting from on... different, like mm. porting from different system systems? Because I think this actually the would answer... be a, is both. Yeah, as I was yes to both. Because Persona Four had Persona Four Golden, which was on the PlayStation Vita, and that was a nice way to play. The games mm -hmm. are so long, and also because the game is broken up into such discrete intervals with the mm -hmm. day calendar system yeah so. it's perfect to just like do five minutes and then be like okay i'll, I'll take I'll, you know i gotta go on the bus or do something else I'll, yeah i'll take a five second break and then i'll get right back into it and mm -hmm. then do five more minutes and you know five hours and next thing you know it's midnight and your real irl students are suffering because you're spending too much time and, the, Shibuya. and the last time you saved it was uh, 30 hours and now it's 40 hours what happened <laughs> Yeah, so much pause time. I have so much pause time going on. You guys don't understand. I leave my system on. That's yes, why, exactly. That's why the time looks so long. Uh, okay, Tayson, you are a hero for many reasons, but yes, I am. I, because, I, I, because you, I'm a listener. You, that's enough. I'm cutting your audio. I'm cutting your audio. Okay, <laughs> you're a, a hero because you also put together a little document for us to talk through. And uh, so. I say let's kind of tackle Persona 5. We're going to put some fun music in here and just talk about some of our favorite things. And then we cut this up so it seems snappy and fun. Or <laughs> I'm really tired and I just put all the audio in and it's shitty and two hours long. <laughs> and it doesn't matter because only you, me, and my mom are going to listen to it. So no one's going to give a, a rat's arse. We have a standard to uphold and a commitment to them and the fans to produce grade A level work at a grade a grade D budget. And so if that comes together right now, we got screen recording on, we got Discord not really working <laughs> for audio, and we got GarageBand. So if this kind of amalgamation, this freak Frankenstein's monster comes together into a workable version of this book club, I'm all for it. But because Applause. it won't, <laughs> because it won't, we might need to suffer through the shoddy audio. Um, okay. Also, this podcast is sponsored by Mary Shelley. That's the name, right? The Frankenstein person. <laughs> yes. Big yeah. She's the a author. Huge the fan. author, not the, the, <laughs> the person is Dr. Frankenstein. <laughs> talk, let's talk about the music first, because it's a big star of the show. It's out of order. Do you have a favorite song or like a favorite? This is, I, I don't know the name, so don't even give me a gosh darn name. Not okay. So I actually do not. I think the. The, the name of the song is Last Surprise, and the reason, and it's the fight song. Mm -hmm. And the reason I mm -hmm. looked it up was because at one point when you're doing, as soon as, I feel like as soon as you start playing Persona 5, like, I don't know, but yes, I do know, because you told me. Um, let's, let's take a step back before you get to the music. Um, I was like, oh, I'm, mm -hmm. play, I'm gonna play this game very casually. Like, I'm just gonna run through mm -hmm. it and, mm -hmm. and not look at the guides, mm -hmm. and I have other mm -hmm. things in life. I'm an adult, I don't wanna spend all my time delving deep into this universe that is Persona 5 smart, and so mm -hmm. and so at first I was like I'm just gonna do whatever and pick random choices and then as soon as you start playing for real like I think after the yeah, first chapter no. you're like oh shoot uh everything I do is so much more important in the long run and I gotta figure it out and so for once sure. you go down that rabbit hole of YouTube videos without the spoilers oh. watching girlfriend reviews Watching mm -hmm. some other videos, you end up on the music tracks and the the song "Last Surprise" or yeah, "Last Surprise" is kind of the the one that's been. Is that the "Never See You Come"? Yep, that's that one. That like really yep. kicks in. Yep. Dun, dun. <laughs> yeah, really fun. You never see it coming. I like Last Surprise. Um, I didn't know the song, but I was, you know, I was saying earlier about how, you know, once you start playing Persona, you kind of dig deep into the YouTube stuff and you f you find music. And so, Last Surprise. I am actually not a great music person. I've no, been me heard neither. it's it's been described as jazzy, but I don't hear jazziness. I just hear awesomeness. 
I mean, jazz is, you know, it's the things you don't hear, right? So maybe if you're not hearing jazz, that is ultimately the purest expression of jazz to begin with. You know what I like is the one when you're in the apartment and it's like vaguely French, but I have no idea what is being said. Taysom, let's talk a little bit about your experience. What did you think going into Persona 5? How much did you know about it? Um, I, the only thing I really knew was that it was consistently rated one of those like top games you have to play if you have a PS4. Um, again, like I just got my PS4 bef like in December and was only waiting to play one game, Final Fantasy, yeah. Final Fantasy 7. And so good though. That remake, wow. Although I, well, mm, I don't know. Oh, didn't love it. Well, no, I like, like I like, I really enjoyed it. I liked it. I have Let's no complaints. Let's get into that now. Persona 5 is dead. But this is Final Fantasy no, 7 remake podcast. I am so much more bought into Persona 5 than I was Final Fantasy 7. Got I don't know about you, but I'm like, I am, I'm logging hours and hours and hours. And I'm like, tell me more yeah, about, no, you certainly are. Tell me more about these kids lives. Who do they want to hook up yeah. with? Wait, I can hook up with who? <laughs> right. <laughs> just the, just the gals. <laughs> I always feel nervous with games like this because they're so incredibly long. Uh, yes. And knowing are. myself, the first thing I was struck by, so I had played some of Persona 4. And I've played some of the Shin Megami Tensei series. I, I had no idea they were related for the longest time until I started looking into it. Because I've, I've heard yeah. that name before. As it's a, a casual name. gamer. Yeah, people are always coming up to me and saying, hey, you're familiar with Shin Megami Tensei, or you know what? I had played some Persona 4, which I definitely liked. Mm -hmm. But I had certain hangups with it as far as the storytelling. It's, all the Persona games are based around kids in high school dealing with some type of kind of demon, and in the case of Persona 4, the characters are facing inner demons. Hmm, so there are no, so adults aren't the antagonists in this at all, or there's no? Uh, in Persona 4? Yeah, or the in series Persona as 4. Whole? Or the series as a whole. Yeah, Persona 4, there are antagonists, uh, adults, but for the most, opposed, okay, so for Persona 5, the main, the, the beat of the story is that there are these adults who have kind of these dark desires and- Nefarious. Right. Machinations. And, I'm just using vocabulary words. Please tell me more about this nefarious. In the case of Persona Five, they have these dark, these dark desires. It creates this palace and this this group of, uh, you know, unlikely heroes has band together in order to confront them and have them reveal their. Uh, re by defeating these demons, the the character who had created the the palace um, has a change of heart. Is yeah, the big, they the big hook. They learn the error of their ways, they atone, they confess to their crimes, um, and all this is done in that palace, this uh, imaginary metaverse that um, the, your characters run around in. And, and in the case of Persona 4, although a little similar, most of the characters were dealing with things that were more internal. So somebody who hmm. is shy, but has certain desires or interests that they're embarrassed about or are holding back. So... Um, and some of those felt a little mishandled. I liked this kind of from the off. Mm -hmm. I think even um, because the game opens up with your character stopping what appears to be a sexual assault, although I assume war is going to get unfolded I, through that story. Yes. How many hours are you at, by I'll, the way? <laughs> I know, I'm not going to discuss that. Here. Okay. I have a reputation to uphold that I'm a very busy person, and if I come on this podcast and say, yes, I've been playing for two weeks and I'm 35 hours in, it's going to shatter that. Um, but I, I apologize for even putting you in that position. <laughs> I liked the idea because it did, uh, you know, it gave a like a sense of justice to the main character that mm -hmm. also, um, the Persona 4 especially, in this game too, they're not always excellent about like handling sensitive topics, more sensitive topics at all. And this game also stumbles, but um, at least in general, it's, uh, you know, kind of lying in the stand that you're... You know, I felt a connection with the main character for mm -hmm. standing up. I felt proud of that person and was interested to see, you know, kind of where that went. And I think the, even the first uh, villain. Uh, Kamoshida. Kamoshida. Kamoshida, thank you. You know, you definitely wanted to take that guy down. Absolutely. And it felt only more and more relevant. And I, I wonder even what it would have been like playing this game when Persona 5 first came out versus now in the, the greater sense as a nation we have mm -hmm. for social justice. It just felt like, well, you have to take down this guy. Do you want to explain him a little bit for us? Uh, sure. Uh, he's this, uh, Kamoshida is this creepy ass, uh, I know we have uh, certain listeners, but I'm gonna say creepy ass, that's the logic. Um, that's creepy right. ass uh, Call volleyball, like volleyball coach at this high school, right. who's like some former Olympian, and he just abuses his position as this like star volleyball coach. 
Mm -hmm. And the sad part about this, I, I, and I think this is kind of where the protagonist comes in, but the sad part about this is that all the adults around him and the whole school just kind of stays quiet. So what he does is he abuses students um, physically, mentally, pushing um, the students on his volleyball, you know, the, the volleyball team. I guess he feels, views it as his toy volleyball team, but on Smart. the volleyball team to um, to extremes and... Um, and he also has like all these like really sexual, overtly sexual comments about mm -hmm. some of the young female students. And as a teacher <laughs> myself, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Um, I was like, this is freaking gross. And um, I don't know how or what kind of school they're in where, you know, the other adults stay quiet, the, you know. Yeah, no, good for you. It activated you in a similar way that, like, the second palace for me, speaking as an artist, I just really, like, connected. <laughs> the palace is just, wow. like, dungeon for the audio <laughs> listeners who have not played the game. Yeah, yeah by yeah, audio so listeners, true. that's not redundant at all. No, or by listener, it's not a, it's not a leap in and of itself either. But the, um, but yes, you meet this, so you go to this high school, the setup is, you go, you're a new kind of new kid in town. You've been somewhat punished there. Yeah, you're off to go to school. You have this reputation, right. and you're just trying to fit in. But something happened. You see the what a clear error in their ways. You're connecting with other students that also feel ostracized for one reason or another. Maybe they're a direct victim, or they have some connection with these people you take down on this. The way in which the game is broken up, kind of palace by palace. So yeah, I felt right away like a big uh, a connection with the hero. I liked the other. I liked Ryuji. Uh, and he has a connection as having been a former athlete and also treated very poorly by this coach mm -hmm. and certainly like on, um, and she has the most kind of direct relationship with the volleyball coach as she has been harassed by him and kind of blackmailed and kind of blackmailed. And she is a friend that's in a rough situation as well. Um, what were your, what were your thoughts? I guess overall so far between that and the second, we'll just talk about these two cause that's mm -hmm. as far as I am. So for that palace in the second, um, how did you feel they compared? Or what was your connection to it? Not palace, like uh, not gameplay wise, but more so the story beats. Yeah, I, I agree that the first chapter, the first palace was a lot more emotionally loaded. But part of that might also have been because you meet so many more characters. Um, and there's much more interplay between the characters, right? It's not just, hey, you know, this brand new character who we have no background with. It's hey, it's not just one character that you see in the hallway as you're running around the school exploring and figuring things out. It's uh, multiple characters and mm -hmm. their history with each other. So Ryuji, um, who is one of the, you know, the characters you get to play, and On? I just pronounced mm -hmm. it Anne. <laughs> yeah, I think it's On, right? Because it's like, because Morgana is always saying, like, Lady, Lady On. I um, right. I have it on Japanese uh, dubbing. Oh, look at you! First you watch Lupin in French, and now you watch. I can't. I can't. Persona I cannot Vine. deal with. Uh, the voice acting is very good. I just generally don't. I've been burned enough times where I just leave it by default as Japanese voiceover. <laughs> yeah, like well, not not dubbing. I'm just not a big reader, and you know it's all those words. <laughs> all those words. Well, let me tell you, you should learn how to read. <laughs> I'm a teacher. <laughs> I, wouldn't, I wouldn't know where to start. <laughs> well, you start with simple sentences. I kind of wonder who this game is for because, you know, the, the protagonists and the characters are high school students and yet the content is very, very much what I consider adult. I, I know high school students are dealing with it, but, um, you know, you mentioned earlier An's friend was in a tough spot. Um, Shiho uh, made herself harm by jumping off like the second floor or some sort of, I don't know what floor it is, but some, you know, off the building of the school and um, ends up in the hospital. And so... Um, you know, obviously, you know, high school students are dealing with this thing, but every time I just play it and, 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 and read, I'm just like, is this really intended for high school students or is it intended for slightly older audiences? It definitely, you know, feels that the classic setup of uh, anime and it's certainly a trope that extends beyond just anime. But, you know, this obviously um, sense of, oh, you know, kind of children ultimately who have a perception that is kind of bigger than themselves and like this kind of they have an obligation to set things right in a world that where they only kind of get it. And mm -hmm. I, you know, you feel that setting the high school setting, right. is so common. I think partially because high school is uh, universally such a shared experience and mm -hmm. that it's, you know, public education offering. Everybody's had some type of high school experience versus aging them up a little older. It starts to yeah. you know, diverge. And I also and get, also, yeah. 
Oh, I was Go gonna ahead. say I also get, it kind of follows the the YA novel, um, the young mm-hmm. adult, right? Remove as many adults as possible from the story, not right or or or, or adult uh, parent figures, right? Yeah, because adults are stupid. They're they're, and they're there dummies. to create more problems, right? <laughs> but anyway, I, I just felt like these students were very um, like very aware of their social standing situation more so than I think any awareness I had when I was in high school. Hmm. I'm wondering the scale or the scope of the the criminal, right? So in this first palace, it's this pervy, um, abusive volleyball coach, right? Um, what is the scope of that kind of crime versus this other one where he ruins people's lives by stealing their art? But I, I feel like the scope of that is much smaller because, you know, not everyone yeah, I, has I an experience wanna... of being an artist and... Yeah, again, I have, but most people haven't, and, or at least haven't enjoyed <laughs> the same level of success that I have. The um, yeah, I agree with all that. Definitely, the first palace hits a little a little harder. Although I like the fact that the second palace, which then is this, it is an artist. He's a well respected artist. He has an exhibit going on, and uh, but it kind of comes to light through a way that feels fairly organic in the mission structure that multiple characters are telling you that there is this individual who is plagiarizing the work of his pupils, essentially. Mm-hmm. And then um, kind of either drives his pupils out or um, continually kind of reaps the benefit of their... Or ruins their life. Yeah. Um, is also, you know, kind of committing these forgeries. And um, I did feel... So I liked the second the second palace in that it does get moving pretty quickly. Like there wasn't a ton, a ton of buildup. There's a, a bit mm-hmm. with the new character you meet and on um, being put into a situation where she has to model, which is a little bit of an eye roll, um, but also fine. But it... It has, like, this is, like, okay, this is the tone, tonality that I feel like is better in Persona 5 than it was in 4. So in 4, there is more, like, characters, for instance, the, one of the very first kind of uh, palace settings for Persona 4 is kind of the this attractive girl-next-door-ish character who, of course, is going to be a, a love interest, um, who, you know, who's really closed up, and then her kind of inner demons are that she has, like, these romantic passions and um, things like that. And it feels, especially given their age, um, and th- there's like a lot of fascination on un- undergarments and things like that. It just it feels like, especially juven- a juvenile, um, even more so when you consider like you can also romance this person. Mm-hmm. So it's like, uh, like what is the tone of this? Yeah. And then there's more teachers, like making comments that are offhand about things that are just like not uh, appropriate, but are kind of taken at lo- as like, oh, it's like just a quirk of this teacher or whatever. Mm-hmm. And whereas um, in this. I feel generally it's, it's able to recognize like, hey, you know, teacher saying these things to female students is not, you know, not okay. But there is like the little bit of the line it walks, not as elegantly where like most of the personas, which are the creatures that you kind of harness for their skills. A lot of them make like weirdo, like wouldn't you want to date me t- style comments. There's like this kind of undercurrent of sexuality to a lot of things. Yeah. Right? Like, um, and same thing goes for like, the, scene. the context of the second one where yep. it's like Aunt on is meant to uh, pose nude and she's like very nervous, but no, you never had the option of like letting her out of the situation or saying like, you know, we're only going to do this if you're for sure comfortable or whatever. Like, and I'm wondering if I'm thinking about all these other minor uh, moments in the story where, you know, it's just on your way to school and some other random classmate gets harassed by some older gentleman I, I, mm-hmm. I would argue they're not gentlemen. Or, you know, you're walking through Shibuya and, you know, you're listening in or eavesdropping to conversations and you're, you're seeing a lot of this kind of predatory behavior. And I'm, just, I'm thinking, obviously, that was intentional to prime us to see, like, hey, this is what's happening and this is not okay. And so maybe in that sense, that's part of the way they were handling um, Interesting. that that issue yeah. right you see it as a, like a, an element of like priming it to be like world building like oh look there's a lot of people who are being gross uh, whereas i i think i'm taking it like a little i have a little less faith in it where i'm seeing it more as like oh there's these are just like kind of gross jokes oh. like that um it i felt like it really so, highlighted like those older men and it allowed like there were actually moments where you were allowed to step in and make a comment and you mm-hmm. could choose to either kind of make like the least Pass or the most passive comment, um, the least aggressive comment, yeah. and and versus more assertive um, comments. So I think 
I think it's a little more than just jokes on kind yeah. of these no, that's, random I, I moments. Appreciate that. But then it's like when when it's up to them to protect on someone who is not comfortable with being naked, then it's like no one's doing anything. So yeah, like I think when it gags. comes to the main characters, there's definitely less of that. So let's talk more about, we've talked a little bit about the story and uh, our impressions. I want to say this, second palace, I, I appreciate that we get into it quickly. I hope some of the other palaces, and you can confirm given you've played the third palace, I hope they have a little bit more of a connection maybe to the, some of the story or the characters that I care about. And that this one, the setup is a little bit like we, we're all off this high, have, having taken down Kamashita, mm-hmm. and we're just like, we got to get someone to destroy was my feeling and it felt a little bit insincere when it was like we gotta find someone we can dunk on and then it's like this guy seems kind of shady and they're like yeah he's shady yeah you know what that is shady also shady let's crush him like whereas i was like is this guy who's you have to really buy in that these side characters really have had their lives devastated and even then you know you pick up his pupil um as part of your team Mm -hmm. who's like a fine new archetype for the for the gang and that's fun but it's like even he is not on board initially. It's partly because he's like gaslit by his bad mentor, but um, it just feels it's a lot to unpack, especially given that when you invade this palace and take the treasure, there is a chance of permanently killing, essentially, or at the very least making the person comatose. Yeah, mm-hmm. like so the risk is pretty high for like this guy's greedy. Yeah, I definitely, I definitely felt that with the second palace. Um, but I will tell you, as someone who's completed the second palace, there again, is... bragging again, bragging. <laughs> Yeah, I, I'm bragging about the fact that I have no life and I can play video games for a lot longer. <laughs> no, I, I just, I am well, too, I, I but I just say, get I will sleepy. Say, I will say that once you actually complete the entire second palace, um, you will understand why it's there. Um, okay. I, will, I will say, I agree. Like it, it that shack does... becomes a hideout? That why? Uh, I, We're wait. repossessing this man's home? <laughs> uh, <laughs> yes, <laughs> you do. You do. <laughs> awesome. You, yeah. As you turn these adults into confessing crybabies and mm-hmm. super moral you take people, their things. you just take their things. And that's, yeah. and that's why you're called Phantom Thieves. I don't think we've even mm-hmm. mentioned that. We're called right. Phantom, Phantom Thieves. Phantom Squatters. You're taking the real estate and you're, you're not going to leave it, baby. Exactly. You know your gosh darn rights. And because now those people are in jail, you know, who's going to... Mm-hmm. Who's gonna Come and visit the property. Yeah, who's going to believe them? Who are you going to believe? A couple old perverts in jail or a bunch of young, hot-ass teens? I think we know, Your Honor. Teens. I would like to just teens. state that um, I, would, I do not approve of the, the give us those teens message as a high school teacher. <laughs> I do agree that the second palace does seem very superficial and artificial in their approach into how they select this target of theirs. As they try mm-hmm. to bring their, you know, their justice upon their community and their world. We were talking about earlier how um, it seems like if you're all... cis heteronormative woman, you can be romanced by this young teen boy. That's the way this works. Pretty much, uh, regardless yep. of your age, occupation. Uh, yeah, totally enjoying this. Okay, let's talk. Let's transition a bit. We've talked about the story. And the palace, and we've talked about things that are going to need to be cut out of this. And if I've let some slip through due to lazy editing, I'm so sorry. But let's talk next about, as we know, the structure of the game. A lot of it is based around choosing activities throughout your day. Mm -hmm. And we don't need to describe all the mechanics in the game. But essentially, you make a couple choices each day, and you're on a timeline. As a student, you have exams upcoming, so you need to balance your time between studying and raising your knowledge stats versus uh, improving your charm that might give you opportunities to raise your confidant level with other characters in the game. Um, so what activities do you prioritize? Because you basically got to make one or two decisions a day. So what do you find yourself gravitating towards? Um, I pay really close attention to the characters um, that you have to have a certain level of skill to interact with. So for example, mm. with On, right? Uh, you mm-hmm. had to have a certain level of kindness in order to actually continue her story arc or to build yeah. that confidant level, the confidant level. Yeah. And so I kind of focus the on... The lover's persona. Yes, the lover's persona. Mm-hmm. I am um, thou and thou art I. Actually, let me hop in here, Tayson. Thanks for your answer, but... Okay, you know what I hate? I hate every time you meet the new confidant and then it does the jump forward. I appreciate the game opens in medias res, the big heist you get captured by the police, but I hate every time you meet a new confidant and the guy's like... I'm going to be your, I'm going to do your website for you. And then it's like, dun, 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 dun. And it the cuts forward. And the, the calendar pages just fly off the screen. Yeah, exactly. It, it was fun like once, but now then, the, and then it's like cut 
for. And police officer's like, there's no way with your busy schedule you also could have maintained a website, right? So who, who did it? Who and then made the like, website for you? <laughs> then, dun, 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 then back. It's like, we get it. We get this is their band. Like, I, I appreciate that it gives you check-ins because otherwise I probably would forget that this is being told, like retold mm-hmm. in an interrogation setting. But I wish that it, it did it a little more elegantly. Like, I could have bigger scenes and fewer of these, like, cutbacks. But I think the setup is fun, such that every time you encounter the police officer um, and the other, like, I something I really like about the game, too, you get the idea that, you know, there are other uh, mysterious and mythical things that are happening before you arrived in this town. Like, there's the train incident and stuff like that. So you know there's there is something bigger than yourself that uh-huh. has happened here. Yeah, and there's kind of this mystery of, of how did these palaces ever get built? Um, sure. Who gets to build a palace or who gets to have this control over other people? And uh, again, I, I'm, I'm hoping it unravels a lot more. You know, I, I want to know the mystery of this. this is part of the reason why I keep playing. Right. There's a lot of mis- mysterious things happening and they talk about these people with psychotic breakdowns, the train accident. Yeah. Right, um, interesting. And you have some fun thing happening at the end of the second palace. I will tell you that right now. This, do you go back? Do you go back to the all you can eat buffet? Unfortunately, I no. figured that was. <laughs> I figured that was going to be. Unfortunately, no. I wasn't. I wasn't so enamored with it when it was like, let's go get the meats. And you walk over, and it's like, we could probably <laughs> use a salad. Let's go to the salad. It's like we could probably use fish. <laughs> and, go to the fish. And you know what? You know, as a JRPG gamer, you know that you never go the direct path. Right, you always right. go some other side because uh, you know For some sure. other There's direction. There's a treasure in there. There's a treasure sure. box. There's some extra dialogue, and with that particular scene, I was like, "Oh no, I could have just played it directly because the dialogue was." There's shit. nothing. There's nothing there. It's, and and the I know. And I, the text yeah. and the dialogue and the writing of this game is what is amazing. But there's right. times really where I'm like, good. I should have just played the game like they wanted me to play and not wander around like yeah. uh, the vo- I like the voice acting and then the amount of storytelling is phenomenal in this like there's so much of it I cannot imagine having to edit together all of these different cues you do not have a lot of really agency over the way in which the story plays out like your decisions are always two variants of something that's going to mm-hmm. receive probably the same answer however there's a ton of voice work the game is very long but I I do wish also there was a little more nipping and tucking especially like when you're in the palace, every time you enter a new room, there's like a shortcut scene where a character has to explain, like, these are the things in the room. And that type of stuff, I'm like, oh, because I actually have really, I've really enjoyed the combat quite a bit. And, um, you know, it reminds me, a game series you might enjoy, Jason, uh, is Fire Emblem. We're making this count for this. We have to do this otherwise Nintendo. legally to be another Nintendo podcast. Um, but Fire Emblem, and as that series has gone on, it's gotten a lot more Persona-like. And in fact, there's a crossover Persona Fire Emblem game that came out on the Wii U and recently on the Switch again. Really? Mm-hmm. Um, which is has all the trappings of Persona, which is neat. And it is called Tokyo Mirage Sessions, which is a crazy ass name, but it's S M T backwards. Is a, is a but um, the but in any event, Fire Emblem has gotten more and more Persona ish. You make like these kind of day and you have a certain time slot you decide who you're going to go do these activities with the characters you build your uh, rank with them which then in the battle system which is affects a your chess like or... thing yeah it affects the stats when you use those units together and but what i found with the most recent one was like uh, i still wish there was a little more battle and a little less dialogue because i love the battle of fire emblem mm-hmm. so much and there it was a little heavily weighted towards the more persona ish social aspect but not nearly to this level but it had much more of those trappings um, but in this case, I'm liking both halves really equally. Like I really enjoy the feeling of like, okay, you have, you know, one time slot in the day and I'm like, okay, I know I really want to raise my knowledge because I would like to then tomorrow go to do the burger challenge competition, mm-hmm. which will then raise my guts. So then I can go to the airsoft guy the next day, um, which is also so quaint, bless Japan for their airsoft stores or whatever. Meanwhile, everyone and their child in America has four guns, but at least here it's like treated as like, you know, no one has guns, which is great. But the, um, you know, but then I want to use my guts to then advance my dialogue with him. Like, I love that planning and I love that it's succinct. Like you, especially like if I choose to go to the, to the uh, bathhouse I'm going to choose it, and then I can basically hit skip because I don't need to hear, like, what Morgana... Yeah, you, know, you definitely learn to use that fast-forward skip function pretty quickly. Love the fast-forward, so glad it's there. Oh, absolutely. I, I would have probably quit playing if that fast-forward function were I think we know there. that is not true. We know that's not true, but I love the, I love the, I love the faint as if it were. <laughs>
I think my original question was, what do you find yourself choosing What do I find myself often? choosing to do? It's back to that original question. Um, again, hard to not dig into the stuff online and YouTube videos. And yeah. everyone is saying, focus on the confidants. Like, if you can raise mm -hmm. those skills, raise them, raise them because the, apparently they have a bigger impact on um, the gameplay and the features than just... Uh, building specific skills up but as you mentioned earlier like you have to have a certain skill level in order to get to you know continue that yeah. story arc with the character and so that's kind of how i go about it um do you have a confidant you've prioritized i i'm definitely someone who likes to stick to the originals so when i think about any game like if it's the characters you've had from the beginning and you have a longer story with them like those are the characters i want to focus on and so for mm -hmm. Persona 5, you know, it's Ryuji and An. Um, and Mar yeah. uh, those are the two that I really, you know, put most of my time towards if I'm going to do some activity with them. Uh, if they, you know, call, like that's the one where I'm like, okay, I will go to their event and follow through with the story without second guessing it. Um, and so mm -hmm. uh, everyone else, like, um, is like, mm, do I really need to raise my stat, you know, my confidence level with this person? Um, right. Or, or, or can I wait later in the game and build it up? And so, mm -hmm. um, Ryuji and An, for sure, uh, they're definitely my party the most, uh, even with the, that new character, the new character, Yusuke. Yes, Yusuke, who I like that he is different enough. You know, I appreciate that he is a character that does not go to their high school. Mm -hmm. yeah, he has I his own little quirks. Um, he also has his own like little animations, which I appreciate uh, for a game that, you know, there aren't... Besides the very few cutscenes, a lot of the times the characters are doing fairly standard, you know, motions. And I like when you are when he's doing the portrait of of on he like he's like evaluating the the level with his brush, mm -hmm. and he's like a little more like uh, there's an he's very put together, but also like a little clumsy, possibly he's a little goofy, you know, unintentionally. And I I really like the spice that brings, and I like that also Ryuji and on kind of accept him as being part of the team pretty quickly. Like there isn't a lot of hang ups about like. Why, this is our who, thing, who, or, we're gonna, who we're gonna let into our group? Yeah. yeah. Even though the like main plot conceit of how you get more people seems like I still, they would just be getting people all the time. I still don't quite understand. <laughs> it seems how... like you just need to be near that person when you hit the app on your phone. That basically sounds like it because like early in the game, you just you get Ryuji really fast, and you right. know you enter your first dungeon. But it's like, how the heck did he become? Did he? Why was it him? Was there something? Was there some special quality or trait about yeah. him? And maybe no. we will find out that maybe, there are. Maybe we will, but it definitely seems like it's, it is just location. Like, you were near the person when they opened that. Right. Same thing for An when she entered the metaverse. It was yeah. very much like, oh, you were here with us, and so therefore you are now in it, and you now have right. all these special powers because you just happen to be in the proximity of the main character. Yeah, definitely well, I, there's something very special curious, about Joker. Very curious but, about how that's going to play out. Yeah, I hope there's, like, a little more, but it could be something as simple as, like, you were all chosen by a higher, mis you know, mystical power, and then like you all had to come together. Period. And your fate like, was to come together regardless. Yeah, exactly. And so, the fact that it happened seemed because right. Now wanted. we have to fight God because it's a JRPG, and they always are going to end with some some level of that. But the um, I think that like for for this overall, uh, yeah, I've liked the cast. I've liked how they come together. Um, I know a little bit about some of the future characters, and I just by nature of encountering them on just in gaming things. And uh, yeah, I like the band of characters. They're different enough. Um, and I, I like how they work in the battle system just in terms of... I do really enjoy the battle system. It's not just yeah. this traditional... Well, it, let's it, talk I mean, about it. it. Let's it get is, into it. Yeah, let's get into it. Uh, it is great. It is a traditional turn-based battle system, in a sense. Mm -hmm. But um, there is the AI is really good for when you allow them just to play on their own. And yeah, So all, I have not done that at all. I've always really? played as them, yes. Really? Because just... I'm so nervous. Okay, so uh, I'm so nervous about the SP, which are the magic points in this, and they're very limited because you want to get as far as you can in a dungeon. This is for my mom to understand it. You want to get as far as you can in a dungeon before your magic runs out, essentially, so you can try it again the next day, but you're allotting a full time slot you could be using to study or do whatever. So yes. you want to be efficient is the name of the game. And I'm worried that when I let the computer control the other characters, when I have done it, you're right. They like do a great job targeting weaknesses and I like also you can hit the analyze button when you're in a battle, and then Morgana will just dictate to you, like, this character is weak against the wind persona. And so then it will automatically pull up your applicable persona, which is awesome. Without having to actually cue it, you can just, like, see it. Um, 
but I'm so nervous about wasting SP that I have full control over my so people. So this it was actually during the second dungeon that I figured out what I need to do, and that please. was please, yes, I'm all ears, yes, please through the tactics, right? So when you can assign mm. or change tactics, you change it to instead of mm -hmm. just uh, conserve you change SP. it to conserve SP. So um, they use their gun a lot more often. They attack normally. Mm -hmm. They'll still heal when your HP is low. Um, yeah. Unfortunately, they don't target the weaknesses like they do in, in when you do like normally allow them to do it, yeah. you know, free for all or whatever it's called. Um, but they do a really good job of you know doing all the things you would, and you can serve your SP, and especially for those weaker battles where the monsters like yeah. aren't like you know you can kill them in a turn or two or whatever, um, that builds your XP and give you items and money. Um, right. Like that's really useful, and so I, I constantly find myself using the conserve SP tactic to to just get through and and there's a little uh, small amount of grinding I, I would say barely any grinding yeah no i've um, i've enjoyed what grinding i enjoy the act of grinding yeah you know obviously anyone anyone can tell you when i was in high school like it was you know an issue like everyone else is doing it but of course i'm going to grind it's fun it's exciting uh, you feel you know new feelings during it um but so i'm glad there's like some element of that in this game as well yeah but even um, then, like as someone who doesn't like to grind as much, um, and that's hey, buddy, it's no crime. You don't even grind. You can always <laughs> slow dance. But again, I felt I felt like that sort of SP really helped uh, because you didn't use up all your SP and you use your SP really for healing. And again, mm -hmm. if you're not controlling the characters directly, you do like two commands and then like half the enemies are dead, and then yeah. you know you move on pretty quickly. And so when you're in the dungeon or the palace or the memento. Um, which is another dungeon palace space, um, not for any particular character, but for all of that kind of um, mm -hmm. Tokyo community or uh, region. Um, you can you can get a lot further in the game without having to you know exit that dungeon, use up a time slot, and re-enter the next day. You can just keep going um, and and really only use your your SP for healing. And at that point, you actually have a bunch of items too. So yeah, and the fact that you get more characters like I swapped out yes, Morgana, you swap them out for... but, but I love that you can still utilize their healing. That was like I did not expect that. So I also use the skill of Morgana Dia to like heal everyone, even though Morgana is like not helping. Yep, and Morgana apparently oh. has some really good healing skills. Utilizing those tactics to make the game, at least for me, go a little faster, so I can progress a little faster uh, and and get the story. Because again, for me, the story is just so compelling. Uh, and, well, the, yeah, and the game agree, play and the gameplay keeps evolving, right? It, yeah. And you'll see more of that soon. Um, okay, I get it. I get it. I get it. Right. Like it's not just your turn base. They've got and and the weaknesses like rock paper scissor. It's also um, baton passes and using your yeah. gun. And I love the skills. baton passes. Yeah, I I'm still like a little murky on really what I'm doing when I get the technical skills. I'm always just like, okay, free weakness essentially. But basically, the, but I love I really think the baton pass is fun because. It, it kind of gives you, there's two ways of playing it, uh, I think, with the battle. You either go, like, conserve SP, but no, maybe I'm going to need to do more healing after post-case, whether that's with items, which is probably the most, like, efficient way to do it, right? Or um, efficient in terms of, like, healing items are not hard to get, but SP restoring items are hard to get and not as generous when you use them. But the, uh, the way I play it, um, like a lunatic, but I love doing, like, okay, I'll doing the baton passes you know i will definitely since my joker has access to all of the different weakness types right i will do something just to queue up like a, a very fun chain all the time and so although i am burning the sp it feels like it's the most efficient use of the sp if you're going to use it and then i rarely does the enemy you know have a turn um which is very exciting because i'll do a couple of baton passes then ryuji is my heavy hitter and so no i don't really heal very often but I do use the SP for the battle. But then, you know, I have some of my skills on Joker are like conserve SP style skills. So certain moves like the nuclear skill for one of my personas, you know, it does, it costs like one to two SP per thing. And that could be enough to get the chain really rolling. It is surprising to me um, in a way that feels, I'm not sure how I feel about it. Like um, because SP is so precious, and healing is hard, a little hard to do, right? At, at a risk of kind of wasting the rest of that day. When enemies get the jump on you, it's very, very punishing. It feels just in terms of like, you cannot do the baton pass anymore. You can't do the all-out attack. Yeah, you really have and, to beat down that enemy and, and use up all your SP in yeah, order to... Yeah, you really to... get 
burned. And sometimes I'm like, man, I, like, I'm sure I could have avoided the enemy better. The stealth is very generous, of course, in this game. But um, even still, I'm like, oh, I can really turn, like, a pretty good run in the palace to being, like, pretty dicey fast. Um, but at least it keeps the risk high. I felt like the game has maintained, like, a good balance between, like, it's challenging. But I haven't felt like, oh, I'm going to get screwed out of... Because there is this time limit kind of always on your mind a bit. I haven't found myself in a situation where I've worried, like, oh, I have done this wrong, and now I will not be able to finish this. Yeah, I it's think It's just a little tight. It's definitely always, like... You know, I could have done a little bit more, but this is this is that's part of the game, right? You always feel like you're missing a little bit. Out of curiosity, yeah. before we continue, what difficulty setting are you on? Just on normie. Okay, that's I I, re- I didn't realize until just yesterday that there are different difficulty settings that you could change it to. I'm also on yeah. normal. I'm just curious. Oh yeah, I'm on hard. Is that what I said? <laughs> yes, you said uh, <laughs> death march. <laughs> death march. Yeah, whatever the hardest one, the one that like no one can beat. I'm beating that one. Yes. The, exactly. um, yeah, I've no, I've liked the difficulty. It's felt really balanced, and like the saving grace, I feel when I feel like I've missed out of things is I could go back for new game plus if I so choose, chose to then go back in and be like, okay, well now, like for instance, my Joker, in addition to being hot as hell, cool glasses, kind of a devil may care attitude at all times, always knows the right thing to say, woke as heck. Um, road warrior besides all of those attributes he's dumb as a rock because i did not do well in the exams like i didn't realize um because I, I was really saving like i was just going to study during the rainy days because like, that's the most efficient yes but at least for april there uh, i mean april showers i know but like the there weren't a there ton weren't of rainy many. days there, you you will yeah. see a lot more coming up after the second palace but yeah. i i felt like i was always studying uh, not always, that's, but like every. That's so I felt you. Like that's I was, so you. I feel like I was studying. You're on every... the bike trainer. <laughs> you're hitting the library. You're ha- handing out medals at MTS. I felt like I was going. I was studying like every other or every three days, depending on story events. But I felt like I was. Meanwhile, I'm in my room, crushing abs, watching nine hundred two one zero spinoffs. Watch. I know that's a waste. It's a waste. It's a waste. I, I know. Yeah. I've heard <laughs> I read it. Look, yeah. <laughs> I well because I bought on the stupid TV channel. You know I'm gonna get those protein shakes because I'm pro teens. And then I got the extra HP boy. And I'm like, okay, well I'm gonna spend some time doing it. Then I realized later, like, what is the point raising my HP like three doing this? There isn't one, obviously. <laughs> I I did like the shopping TV channel because I'm definitely someone who did that for a very long time, and I still watch uh, QVC a little bit. Well, I don't of actually course order you watch QVC. Yes. But yeah, that was definitely the thing. I was like, oh, I have this protein, and I haven't trained in my room yet. Um, right. It kind of lures you into this thing where it's like, oh, I should try that. No, it's a bad use of time, but I did do it. I mean, probably five no, but times. I, no, but I think <laughs> five times. <laughs> it's nearly but, a week's worth of working out, you lunatic. But, but here's I the thing, do Peloton. I, think... I did CrossFit. I did try. I'm just passionate about exercise. If my character has an opportunity <laughs> to crunch mad abs using a, fu- a freaking ceiling beam, I'm gonna do. I'm gonna do those crunches with the cat on my shoulder. What do you think? I think you're just a better person than I am. <laughs> well, that's what I, I think. just have different goals. My goals are excellence, and you have goals too. <laughs> <laughs> and, and I think that's more yeah. as you continue down that path, you become like, oh, let me look it up. Let me look it up on the phone. What does IGN say? What, All what does the Polygon time. say? <laughs> I want so badly to get away. Like, that's the thing that's always. I think when I was younger, also. Can I say something real quick? Uh, some some of the guides on Persona Five Royal. Are for mm. Persona Five, not the I Persona know. Five Royal uh, Version. You think I went to the bathhouse on a freaking Monday night like an idiot? There's not even a mineral <laughs> bath. I did, and so I'm like, wait a second, <laughs> I got the wrong answer on the thing. I thought that's what I the know. thing was, and it was a little frustrating. But yeah, but you were saying nothing on a quick, nothing a quick reload of a save can't fix. But I hear you. The um, I'm saving constantly. I it is okay. So. I think when I was younger also, there there's this feeling for certain games that stand out in my memory. Again, Nintendo games like Majora's Mask, mm-hmm. uh, which has a three-day cycle for Legend of Zelda. Pikmin has the first game, especially as a finite amount of time to finish the game. And it was very daunting. It pushed me away from those games for fear of not being efficient. It can but be stressful. Now, but now there's a fun element where it's like, you do have total control over these schedules. It's also a game. And that at, for many games that feel maybe too easy, like that extra pressure uh, can be motivating. And so, uh, or at least interesting. And so the, um, I've liked it a lot more, but I, I do fall into the trap where it's like, if I do a confidant thing now, 
it's pr- feeling pretty rare that I don't, at the very least, when it's done, check to make sure I didn't like miss an opportunity to raise my level then. Oh like, yeah. Which is then I'm like, ah, oh, then when so I, I do reload it sometimes and I'm like, ugh, that just feels like that is not as fun, but also not, not like, okay. So if I don't have the right persona for the confidant, cause you know, it'll raise more of you have the yeah, persona mm-hmm. equipped as the actual one selected. You won't engage. I don't worry that. about that. If I have it great, but I'm not like monitoring that, okay. you know, I'll check it, but I won't like be like, well, I can't go see on because I don't have a lover's persona. Like I'm still going to go. Yes. We're still going to go to that. We're just going to take a little train trip away. We're going to have a lovely time in the countryside. She's going to talk about strengthening her heart. I'm going to give her sweet air kisses. But, like, I'm not going to worry about anything beyond the responses. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is hard to break that habit a bit. Yeah. I, as you're describing how you're playing it, I, I am someone who saves... Uh, not that frequently because I did die once. Uh, um, and oh, I died multiple times. And you, sure. you just you just get to continue from that last fight. So it's like there's not sure. that much of a. But risk. I'm not even saving because the combat. I'm saving because of like making a real world decision. Yes, well. but for me, whenever I save, it's it's really just oh, it's this next, it's a boss battle, and mm. I kind of just accept oh, the decision I made earlier was the decision I made, and I'm gonna move yeah. forward. If you know, sometimes I'll look. No, I think up. that's the right way to go. Especially sometimes, with New Game Plus, you could, like, in theory, like, if yeah, you could go back and play. We're so crazy as to go back to it again. Uh, but but I, I can't imagine saving and then, oh, I made this choice. Like, I don't know. I, I think part of it has to do with the fact that I've played enough games where loading times take forever. And I'm like, I do not want to sit through that loading time. I just want, yeah. I, I'm just really curious. But the thing I like about the confidants is, regardless of what you choose, like, there's an interest, like you were saying earlier, like the voice acting, the writing, like, there's always an interesting outcome. And so. Yeah. Like, even if you pick the worst, you know, uh, dialogue select option or whatever, you still get an interesting, well-thought-out um, dialogue yeah. afterwards. No, I agree. It, it, the story-wise, you're not missing anything, so that's nice. And, you know, something else I really appreciate, and I would actually like to see for the next Persona game, but I do think that, like, something, I, I, a feature I like, so outside of these things, is that when you're doing the quizzes, you can check the network replies mm-hmm. and see what other players have chosen for the answers to the quizzes are you using this ever i am using it what i didn't realize that was a feature because every time you start the game it's like do you want to connect to this thing and i'm like yeah. why do i need to connect to this thing like yeah exactly. what are you trying to sell You're me like, and so that, for yeah, the longest for time sure. i would actually just pull up the actual guide on ign yeah. or, or polygon or whatever and then i realized oh this feature exists and i don't need to pull it up as often yeah, as i, I do I wish that were implemented in other aspects. Like I liked how on the ex- actual exam and uh, not the like pop quizzes, you couldn't do it. That was a fun little, you know, change, especially because if you've been using it to answer these things correctly, some of which are like, there's some of them are just like, okay, describe the root of these words. And those are pretty easy, but some of them are more challenging. Especially and the Japanese history ones. So I'm like, the Japanese I, I history ones. No exactly. Japanese and history. It, but it's nice to have that option because it's like, okay, 95% of people chose this. It's definitely the right thing. And, I wish there was a little more of that, even in like confidant replies, mm. because you can kind of choose whether or not you want to do it. But it's like, if I'm going to look up a confident reply, I'm going to look it up. So it's like, I appreciate when they can save me the minute of Googling and pulling up the guide for, just versus just hitting it. Yeah. You know, if I want to decide to, more often than not, I will like choose confident replies and then look back on them and say like, did I miss an opportunity for a big gain? Yeah, and that's interesting. So far, that... they're, they tend to be pretty clear. It's not too tricky as to like what to say. I don't know. But Some of the dialogue options are pretty tricky. <laughs> <laughs> Sometimes when you're faced with three bad choices, I'm like, I want, I'll look it out because I'm like, I don't want to say any of these. <laughs> I don't, I don't want to pour on into this modeling she's not comfortable with. Um, and, and then you realize it doesn't matter at all in the end of the day, at the end of the day. Right. Uh, yeah, and life life is short, and we're all going to die. So honestly, what's the point? Just play the game and enjoy it. Exactly. Play the game, Austin. Play the game. <laughs> <laughs> I am. But yeah, I'm just really curious as to what what's going to happen in the rest of the game as we continue to play. Do they answer these questions about um, the psychotic breakdowns? Um, how, how does that whole thing work? And, and how is this framing, you were saying earlier in mm-hmm. Medias Res, or um, how does this framing of being, you know, in jail, being interrogated and prosecuted, like, how is that going to play out? Uh, you know, are you ever going to catch up to the current time and then continue yeah. from there? I'm certain, or, I'm certain we will. I'm I, certain. I, I, yeah, that's what I'm guessing. But I'm, I'm, yeah. I am very curious how it plays out. I'm curious how we get there. Because right now, especially with going after the art uh, director, that it's just like, yeah, it feels like, okay, we kind of can get away with anything. It's a little bit of, like... 
you know, a shady mark on our end as to who is who is a good a good enough victim of these uh, otherwise like valiant efforts on part of the team. Like the, I do hope there's some recourse or some element of yeah catching up with um, the heroes. Just in, um, whether it's like strictly in like a police or law enforcement or investigation element or you know a lot of times characters have asked like why is it that these villains have these palaces but you know we don't kind yeah. of thing and um you know the, uh, the explanation of morgana is like well they have like really dark desires and they've really been festering and so whereas we have faced our demons which is why we're able to pull these personas um but if i would like and that might my guess is that's probably the extent of it, but I would like to learn a little more in terms of, is there going to be some element where it's like, Hey, you guys have done something wrong at least, or have to face themselves a little bit. Yeah. More. I, now that you're saying more like saying that, and, and you're saying, Oh, this is Morgana's explanation. Morgana is that cat character who doesn't know their past. Right. In, in a sense, right, they're right, a right. very unreliable narrator, even though they provide all, sure. the, all the tutorial stuff for you. They that's are, right. they are an unreliable narrator. And, um, I'm curious, you know, I have those same questions, like, where, like, who deserves a palace? How do these palaces get created? How come not everyone yeah. has a palace? Or how come not everyone has mm-hmm. this um, shadow self in the metaverse? Yeah, so far the explanations seem pretty basic, and I I do take them at face value, but I would hope that there might be a little more, like, self-examination of I'm, the characters. I'm hoping so as well. Yeah, especially because I felt the explanation where it's like, well, you're facing, like, your inner you know, you're kind of facing your inner persona and that's how you're able to summon the persona feels like a little thin where it's like, what jokers is like a cool. Our son is cool. Like what's it, what is he facing? You yeah, know, it's and, like, and how do these hot, like she's a model. <laughs> yeah. And, and how do these characters get their specific personas? Like it, it doesn't really yeah. seem like they look so that cool, much though. of a, I agree. Do you have a favorite looking character? No, I do like Arsene as the car- as um, one of the cooler looking ones, but yeah. And what about just like the heroes costumes, like the kids? I like how different what, what they are, are. Yeah, they are all very different. What What is your favorite? Um, Panther. No, I, I kind of. <laughs> uh, who doesn't? Who doesn't like? Um, is do you think it's leather or latex? <laughs> yeah, it looks like leather, moves like latex. That's all I can say. What did you name your main character? How do you make oh, that decision? So I, that was when I was looking at this up, I was like, wait a second, like, what is the main character's name? Like, is there yeah, a default I one? I did this too because. Big drama. Because I'll be completely honest, when I first played Persona, I was like, I played it for like the hour or two. Yeah. And I, and I, and I it's, you know, you leave the dungeon and I, that's when I met with you. I was like, oh, I think I beat the first dungeon because I left it. <laughs> oh, I see, I see. And then I was like, so I, and I didn't play it for weeks. I just kind of left it there and I was playing another game. And then I came back and I was like, oh, that's just the character's name. I forgot, I had, com- I had completely forgotten I had chosen that character's name. And I just have a few names that I cycle around when I, you know, when mm-hmm. you have the option to, to, to name characters. Yeah, like I fart, <laughs> butt face, you I, know, no, normal I, names. I use, I use a real name. Did you use a, like a fun, a fun Yeah, like big one? farter. <laughs> no, of course not. What a maniac. Can you imagine spending a hundred? <laughs> because I'm, because I'm such a, such a, a baby with these things. I always look up like what their canonical name is, just because that is how I my so what my so what is works. what is the what is the protagonist's canonical name? The, re, the name of the character ultimately is Ren, is his first name, and there there's like two different versions because there's an anime that came out after the that, game came I out, did and hear Akira about that. was the name of the character, and then um, but then later when the character I think appears in there's a you know Persona dancing game, there are multiple on PlayStation, and then there's Persona Q, which is a 3DS game. The did, character's did, name now canonically, and I believe in the anime, is uh, I am Arsene. Well, we have Sayuri Palace Puzzle. Oh, have, like, that was when you go through the palace and you have to figure out, the, you know, the paintings like, which yeah. one's the correct what your one? Thoughts? Okay, what are your thoughts on that, actually? I, I felt like it was just... I think it's it, a little it, janky. I don't care I, for it. Yeah, I didn't like it very much. It, You know, there's this comment, there's, you know, the, the famous quote from... Um, from Arrested Development, rest in peace, uh, Jessica. Well, uh, um, no, Walters. Walters. Yeah. Um, but, you know, mother gets off on being withholding. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, look at me. <laughs> look at me getting off. Well, yeah, look at me getting off on being withholding. <laughs> and yeah, I felt like during that moment, Yusuke was being withholding. <laughs> it was mm-hmm. like, just sure. tell us what it is. Don't. I ch- know. <laughs> yeah, he's like, <laughs> what? 
<laughs> that is so funny. Yeah, he's Fun like, was like, just tell us which one it, it is. Oh, and he's like, good taste joker. Also, because like one time I was like, this one's fake. And he's like, good. She was wearing blue. Her real sweater is crimson. And then the next one, I'm like, this one's also fake. And he's like, what? No. And then we get attacked. And then yeah, I'm like, okay, you get it's real. Yeah, for it. And then you yeah. do it. I just think that it's all janky with like the jumping between the paintings. Like that segment where it's like, there's the two blank paintings. And you run through like the one that looks a little bit like an ink block. Where, um, like a woodblock print where you have like the waves and then you have like yeah. the octopus. Like it looked kind of cool, but it, you know, moves awkwardly. You have to use the vision thing to see where you can jump in and out. And um, I just don't love the style of puzzle. They just feel like a little, everything in the game is so tight. The UI is like mm -hmm. so tight. The menus are so beautiful. The music's always banging. The combat's so fun. The baton passes are so exciting. But then like the little mechanics in there where it's just stuff like that where it's, yeah, jumping between jumping between those or like doing the laser grid stuff. It's like, yeah, eh, it these mechanically little, are a little unfinished feel it. It's, it, does, it's it does seem a little dated, right? Um, yeah. It feels we can, a little we can like look at yesteryear. old RPGs where like, oh, we're yeah. up into a painting or, oh, do this little puzzle so that the, the laser fence goes down. For sure. Um, it's, it's, and for so many things that feel very, yeah, like this game is, it's very much its own thing or it's taking risks or like, there's nothing else like Persona, like period. So, but then that stuff's like, oh, it feels like a, definitely with Final Fantasy VII, not so much in the remake, which I really loved, but um, we can talk about it some other time. But like the, um, but the original game, there's so many, you know, mini games, and it's like the my the the amount of like actual mechanical mileage you get on any one of them is so limited, like. You know, it's like snowboarding is funny or like exciting when you're young. Although one could argue chocobo racing is the one you get tired of the most. <laughs> <laughs> for, yeah, for sure. It's like, and they're mechanically pretty thin, but sometimes they're like weirdly challenging. So, you know, you're doing squats and working out or there's so many, or you're doing the golden yeah, saucer these stuff. These don't and have always like a little, yeah, and it's the same thing with this. It feels similar in that regard where it's like, it feel like uh, I would be more interested in like just in the second palace, like if I, if I were to go into a painting, just make the room Beautiful. themed. Like, yeah, like, oh, now you're on a boat and you're in the water and it's a painting. like, And still have me traversing like a normal-ish room. Yeah, like I did. I'd be I more did, interested in that. I did. I really did like that part in terms of the, the graphics and the animation and just walking through yeah, those frames. it was pretty. But the actual, like, jumping back and forth was not ideal. Like, oh, you have yeah, to leave like this. A, you have to leave right. this now in order to push the button and then you have to restart the whole thing. Jason, let's wrap it up here. Um, thank you so much for joining me on another Nintendo podcast. This has been Austin Cummings and... Jason Bowie. And uh, we'll do another check-in when we get a little further in the game. Maybe when we finish our Palace 6, kind of something along those lines. 5 or 6. And if you'd like to see more, hear more of this content that is Nintendo adjacent, please like and subscribe. <laughs> well, thank you, Five so stars. Nice. <laughs> okay, Tazen, thank you so much for joining me. And until next time, uh, be, be safe out there. Get, um, be lit. <laughs>